I was born into darkness. My mother was 13 years old when she met her biological father. She had no idea that her father was a pedophile. My mother went to visit her father over the summer of 1978. And when she came home, she was pregnant with me. I was born to a 13-year-old little girl. So my father is my grandfather. I was conceived in sin, conceived in darkness. What I was born into was just as traumatic. My entire childhood was one form of trauma over another. Dealing with sexual abuse from my mother's older boyfriend, his son, who I would be left with for him to babysit me. He would sexually molest me and he would use religion to do it. He would tell me that I would go to hell if I did not perform. And then he would bribe me with food as a prize for performing. And I would always want my mother to ask as the many times she caught him giving me prizes. I would want her to ask, what is that for? But she never did. My mother ended up separating from that man. She went from one man after another. I had begun to be the babysitter. I was eight or nine years old being left at home for days at a time with a four or five year old and a toddler and then getting penalized via a beating if something was not right when my mother came home. I began to act out sexually because of the molestation, obviously. And I would always seek out older boys to let them touch on me. And there was one in particular. And in this situation, I know that it was nothing but the hand of God who was protecting me from trauma that I would not have been able to overcome. But I remember leaving my sister and my brother, going down to his house with my friend, and we were both getting into trouble together. We tried to go to this young man's house so that him and his friend could do whatever we allowed them to do. And it was only by the grace of God that a gentleman that my mother knew came down the street and said, get your butt back home before I call your mama. I knew, nope, I'm caught. I'm going to get a beating out of this world. I'm going back home. For about a year and a half, I endured beating after beating after beating after beating, tumultuous beatings. Extension cords were her weapon of choice. She would beat me profusely to the point to where my skin would be black, blue, and purple. And I was getting a little bit older and I was just like, I can't take this anymore. I had a lot of anger in me for a God that I did not even believe existed. One night, my mother was beat so bad by her then husband that I think that night something finally clicked in her head and she actually tried to fight back. She pulled out a gun and she tried to shoot him with it, but he pulled the gun from her hands and he beat her with it and threw the gun away. Why is my mother so weak? Why is she allowing this man to beat her? The morning after the beating, my brother and I were arguing because he wanted me to iron him a different pair of clothes and he was at the bathroom door yelling at me. My mother's husband heard the argument. He went to my mother yelling at her and she came into the bathroom with that extension cord and she gave me a beating that was by far the worst beating that I had ever received. Looking back on it now, I now know and understand that the beating that I received was the beating that she wishes she could have given him for the beating that he gave her the night before. I was just done. My body was bleeding. I was bruised all over, welts were forming up on my body. But the emotion that I felt as I was running out of that house to get on the school bus was different from any emotion I'd ever felt after a beating. Everybody got picked up in front of their house. And as I'm on this school bus in searing pain, and I had it made up in my mind that if I went back to that house, I was going to find that gun and I was going to either kill them or they were going to kill me. And I remember saying to God, if I go back to that house, something is going to happen. I got into my first hour class, my geometry class with Mrs. Burnside, a white teacher, but I built a rapport with Mrs. Burnside and Mrs. McGraw, the other white teacher. Out of all the teachers in the building, they were the only two that I actually trusted with my truth. Because my mother's husband was a major drug dealer. His entire family were major drug dealers and everybody knew it. So the black community, even in Michigan, Michigan and Mississippi, were terrified of this man. But I knew that if I was able to just share my truth with Mrs. Burnside that something would happen. So I wrote her a letter and after class, I stuck the letter under her book and I walked out and went to my next class. And within minutes, she was at the door with tears in her eyes talking to Mrs. McGraw. And they called me and they said, we're taking you to the office. CPS was called. They just asked if they could look at my body. And I said, yes. And I'm standing with my back turned to them as they're looking at my body and they're taking pictures. And even now, 30 plus years later, I can still hear the sniffles and the tears and the cries and the way that they were trying to muffle the sounds of their cries from looking at my body. I ended up in foster care that day. My story will only reach a certain amount of people. Your story will reach others. Your story will help others heal.
If you start talking, if you start sharing, you will start to realize that you are not alone. Don't let the enemy keep you bound. We are more together than we are alone.